Welcome home to Homespun, a weekly internet gathering of family, friends, and businesses from Platte County. Our purpose is to connect our community and showcase the colorful threads that run through our tapestry. Grab a warm cup of hometown goodness, sit back, put your feet up, and visit with us a while. I'm your host, Mark DeLapp, and I bring to you portions of interviews from some of our own. Welcome home, Platte County, to Homespun. We are here at Homespun in Hartville, Wyoming. One of the smallest towns I've ever seen, but it features the oldest bar in Wyoming and one of the best steak places. People are reported to come here from five different states to, to eat your steaks and to, to, to dine here. So, um, who wants to tell me how this thing got started? Well, <laughs> we just figured we wanted to move out of California and uh, my brother-in-law and sister had this place and had it up for sale and we came out and looked at it and six months later here we were. Was this as successful when they had it? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, they only had it open for about a year and a half and then he had to, he had some health issues and had to like okay. close the doors and sure. So it just It was for sale was, for like two years. Yeah, it was for sale for almost and two years. Why do you there. think nobody wanted to buy that? Simply because nobody, it's in the middle of nowhere? Uh, nobody had the vision? Buy a business in the town of sixty two people. And it yeah. is considered kind of uh, risky. <laughs> sixty two people I guess. Now we're we're here right before right before you're gonna get hit and crunched. This is one of the first weeks you went open, right? This yes. is the second day. The second day that you've been open since, since Corona. Yeah. All right. So what have you guys been doing since March? Selling groceries. All right. So you're selling, selling steaks, off. selling, selling, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever we can get our hands on. Selling, oh. selling groceries, a little bit of takeout Saturdays and Sundays. We uh, did breakfast burritos. But, I make um, the best burritos too. He really? Does. <laughs> yeah, he does. So do you guys, do you guys, are you open for uh, for breakfast then on the weekends? No. Well, no. all right, tease me with the burritos and then tell me that I can't have it on Saturday morning. What's the, what's up with that? Well, <laughs> depends on how much business you bring in with this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. We'll see we what might, we'll see what we can do. do that. Yeah, we might we might be able to get a special breakfast out of this. You huh? might. You might. Well, you know this this uh, this started off as a quirky little show, but now it's like people like. Next week I'll be with the department, uh, the dean of the Department of Agriculture from UW, and and everybody wants to get on homespun all of a sudden, and it's really started out to be just about Platte County for the people of Platte County, but it's really started to spread, um, and so what we want to know is where you guys grew up first of all. Los Angeles. Yeah. Both of you grew up in Los Angeles. We, we lived about. We didn't meet till we were in our forties, and we lived about. Miles away from each other all our lives. You were in your basically. 30s. I was in my 30s. You were in your 30s? Yeah. I was in my early 40s. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I was born and raised in Glendale, uh, about three miles from the Rose Bowl. Okay. Well, which is not a very good area anymore down there, I heard. Um, I heard it's well, getting a little rough. Where we were at West. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're up in, we were up in the hills. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, um, what what made you want to leave the hustle and the bustle and the culture of Los Angeles? I know that when I moved from Placentia, California and came to a smaller area, that was the biggest thing was the culture shock. How do you guys take, how do you handle that? I... <laughs> he loved it, took me a little while. Did, did you? <laughs> Winter is entirely different here than in California. Tell me about it. Oh yes, it was really cold. Yeah, I didn't know cold and snow like. I mean, this is a hearty place. You got yeah. a hearty little here. <laughs> That's true. That's what uh, Jess was just telling me. She said it's it's um, one of those one of those things that uh, she says. Does it always get cold up here? And I said, well, we're in a mountain, so I guess yeah, we're in a, we're in that uh, that uh, that stretch there. But 
This is the warm part of the state, though. Yeah. You know, get over towards, uh, uh, well, even up to Casper and, and down, down to, what is it, Rock Springs? Yeah, well, they get, yeah, they get more snow, more cold, more Sure. Wind. So, had you guys ever run a restaurant before? You never ran a restaurant before. So you come to a small place from a large metropolis and you just decide you're going to start a business in a town of 62 people. Who is, he who been is wanting to get out of California for a long time. Yeah. So who's, who is the driving force I, on I'm that idea? A, uh, what? Getting, okay. oh, getting out getting of out. California and coming here? Uh, well, my sister lives 10 miles up the road. Okay. And uh, they're the ones that we bought it from. Sure. And so... And what's the, what, what are their names? Uh, Karen and uh, Elaine Roy. Aaron? Elaine. Okay, Aaron and Elaine. Karen. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And um, so they they decide to sell it to you. And uh, they you tried to talk us out of it. A bunch of times. Really? Why? Because well, it's, it's a it's restaurant it's in the middle of nowhere. Well, not only that, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, you know, doing business dealings with family and what if it didn't work and then they feel guilty and we'd be mad at them and sure, you know sure. the whole I, I mean it's just it, it, and it probably wasn't the best idea but you know I mean we figured what the heck it's semi-retirement it's only four days a week right yeah but four days a week in a restaurant is still four days a week <laughs> well no it still turns into a 60 70 hour week yeah it sure does even if you're only open 20 so how many employees do you have here? Seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you guys run this whole thing with just seven employees. And you're open Thursday through Sunday, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, and then you have the, the three days off, which is really not days off for you guys because you have to handle things like the business and uh, things oh, like yeah. that, correct? Yeah, ordering and bills and everything else. Repairs, cleaning, cleaning, and cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. So any regrets? Not for me. I don't know. <laughs> Nine thirty after feeding seventy people, <laughs> it's, it's a long day. Well, do you have like a lot of regulars that keep that that come, oh, yeah. a lot of repeat business? Oh, yes. Because this place has been established. If it's the oldest bar in Wyoming, that bar has been here for a long time. Um, what about the restaurant? How long has that been in operation? Do you know? Twenty ten was when it opened. Yeah, and yeah. they ran it for about a year, year, two, two year and, and a half. half about two years. Right. Yeah. And then it was closed, yeah. and then we... Yeah, it was always a, just a pool, you know, a flat top um, hamburgers and, you know, fried foods, and it had come up for sale, and my brother-in-law and sister had the idea of turning it into a steakhouse, you know, like a high-end sure. kind of thing where, you know, because there's really... Well, I shouldn't say that. There's really no good place to eat around here. That's uh, true. But, uh, you know. Especially a so. higher end. Higher end. There's nothing. And that's what he meant. You can get yeah. decent food around here. It's just not... Um, yeah, you have to go all the way to Casper or or to uh, Cheyenne. Well, we get a lot of people that come down here to eat from Casper and uh, say that we're wow. in Scotch Bluff, Cheyenne. Um, there's a... We get quite a few regulars come from a long ways away. Sure. Denver, Colorado Springs. Now, what what makes your steak so special? I hear just absolute. The first thing I did when I got into town, and I've only been here two months, but the first thing I heard was, "All right, first place you have to go is to Hartville, and you have to order a steak there, because they're like the best steaks in the whole world." So, what's your secret? Who does the cooking? Uh, <laughs> I do. Um, I'm well. I'm kind of a I don't know, perfectionist, I guess. Okay. And everything has to be just right. But uh, I, uh, I can't take all the credit. We buy the best beef we can, you know. And, Do you buy local? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. It, uh, from it's uh, to get we buy only uh, Black Angus Prime. Okay. And the aging, uh, we have to have. I, I won't touch a steak unless it's got at least 35 days on aging. And, yeah. And then I do my own deal in the walk-in as well so it's sure our our, our steaks are, are well aged okay so well that's aged. that's a secret right there did you hear about this new beef down in uh, Chugwater called Wagyu beef which is supposed to be oh that's yeah it's not new those guys have been doing that for okay <laughs> what do you think of that uh, it's good yeah 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 so yeah. how do you, yeah. how does your beef compare with let's say the Kobe beef um, not quite as marbled 
Okay. Uh, just just More lean. under. Just just a hair, yeah, a little bit. Mm. But you know, um, that's a. It, it's all a matter of uh, if you want to spend seventy dollars for the piece of meat versus you know a whole meal for forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, that's a really good deal. So this um, this this um, meal, you know what the prices were in Los Angeles or Chicago or. Minneapolis, you'd be we paying hundred. Yeah, we we compare all the time and say we're not charging enough. Yeah, we well, you, you you'd, you'd be paying a hundred one hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. Um, I know in Chattanooga last year, uh, they put us a special Christmas dinner at this place where they had um, a ham that looked like it was uh, you know cooked in the back room and it charged one hundred twenty dollars because it was a holiday authentic meal with um, this kind of pudding, the bread puddings and. It was like British food. Yeah, it was yeah. horrible. <laughs> it was just horrible. Yeah. So where did you where did you learn how to cook like this? Um, my grandfather. What, did he own Did he own a Did he own a place? No. No, but he was very particular about his meat, and um, we uh, he always wanted me to uh, oh, I don't know help him cook. I guess yeah. especially when he got older. But, uh, did you do a lot of grilling or? Yeah, we did a lot, awful lot of grilling. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And then when the kids were in high school age, we uh, they, they all wanted to start at our house so that I could I, I make them suffer. So they had, when, when high school kids go out, you never know what they're going to do. So it's right. good to send them out with a full belly. Sure. And, uh, and, and how many kids do you have? Three boys. Three boys. Okay. Yeah. Do they help here at all or? No, they're, they're all grown. Yeah, they're all they're all grown and gone. All right. What's the biggest challenge for you? What's the biggest challenge that, that you've had since you've been here? And how many years have you been here now? Oh, we've been here what six and a half years now. Six and a half. Uh, the biggest challenge. Working with your spouse. <laughs> I heard I heard that you just can't wallpaper with your spouse, but you're now introducing something new into the mix. That you can't run a restaurant with your spouse. What? Oh, we do pretty good. Oh, you can. I'm, I'm getting you on camera with this one because this is. I'm half joking. Yeah, <laughs> half joking. <laughs> You're speaking to the women in the audience right now. Um, so half joking. Uh, what are what are, what are the big challenge work, challenges working together? How do you think the co uh, the uh, co COVID nineteen couples did quarantined? I heard the divorce rate went up. That and spousal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot joking because it, uh, it is different working with your spouse because you, the separation between home and work, you're always, hey, why don't we try this? What do you think about is always a thing, but he's very much a perfectionist and, and like one of the highlights, we have to kind of have our own expertise corners um, because I don't do steaks and he doesn't do cake, he doesn't, he doesn't do... I gotta give her some. Yeah. And one time, oh, one time, this was the classic, was he told me I was cutting the lettuce wrong because it wasn't the right size he thought it should be. <laughs> and so... Uh, yeah. And so I just said, well, it's amazing. Thank God I didn't kill those kids raising them. So... Well, he probably got his experience at lettuce school because I guess you go to lettuce school and they tell you how much to, to cook. Oh, but oh, oh, you want? <laughs> Certain well, ideas. I've got my fiance in the room, so I've got to be really careful what I say. <laughs> certain times, other little ideas will come up, and and we just disagree. And I'm, I'm okay, whatever you think. So it just. <laughs> well, she says I've got an idea, and I say, oh, uh oh. <laughs> you know, I I always think this way. You know, when you're both working in something and you're driving towards the same idea. Um, and I used to tell my kids this, you know, when they call with big arguments, I said, if there's nobody, unless somebody's bleeding from the head, do not call me on this. <laughs> so, um, how many hours do you guys put in here? 50, 60, 70 a week. Okay. And how bad did you guys get hurt during the coronavirus? Well, pretty bad. Yeah. 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 We didn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Did you? We're, we're still alive. Yeah. Uh, people. People. Did they support you a little bit? Oh yeah, locally? very much so. And our girls as well. We had a lot of uh, a lot of our regular customers came in and we stepped up and um, sure. were you know writing checks for the girls and stuff. So it was. Boy, it was, that's awesome. Uh, it's real heartwarming. 
Yeah. Did you have to lay anybody off? So you kept a full staff on just with with carry out in, and uh, that's pretty amazing. Well, um, we didn't even really do carry out. I mean, we just, I mean, we went back to doing sandwich. We we used to do lunch, and we found it wasn't economical. But so then we went back to, you know, selling sandwiches out the door. And, uh, you know, sure. Pounds of broccoli. And and if you had to eat here, what would you recommend? What would be your go-to meal? Oh, for me? Yes. Um, I don't know either a filet or a New York probably, but that's just my. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a ribeye guy. Most, you know, a lot of. It, it, it all depends on what what your what your favorite kind of steak is. Sure. You know. Sure. I mean, I, I like a little leaner. Um, yeah. You know, where the ribeye's got a lot more marbling in it. And, right. Right. You know, um, I think our biggest seller is the ribeye, though. Okay. Yeah. And what do you put together with your meals, yeah. as far as your sides, things like that? Well, I make soup every week. Homemade I, soup? I, yeah. What? Yeah, I'm either uh, this week's uh, country tomato. Um, so yeah. Is it like a bisque? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That 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 sounds really really good, especially when it's cold like this. Super, yeah. Super salad. We have three salads to choose from. Super okay. salad, and then the side is the mashed the potato of the night, uh, and a vegetable. And you guys. Um, are under some restrictions here. Now, the governor opened it back up, but he put in enough restrictions that it kind of gave you a headache. Um, but you guys have the advantage. You've got that outside uh, area to eat here too, don't you? Yes. So that's kind of nice. Yes, it is. And um, what have you guys been doing as far as enforcing? I, I see that you guys got gloves and things like this, but any, anything special you guys are doing during this virus? We, we had a lot of fun spacing out the tables with the tape measure and making sure everything is spaced out correctly. What was the regulation on that? Is it six, six feet apart? Feet. Was six feet on the tables? And you can't have what? More than more than uh, nine people at a table or something like six. that? Six people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're splitting up parties. I mean if they have uh, like last night we had a party of seven. So they had four at one table and then three at the other and they're you know so they got to yell apart, six feet apart. But, but they got to yell at each other, so. Sure. Even though they're in the same family, which is ridiculous, in my now, opinion. Now, I, I um, you know, coming here to the Guernsey, um, Hartville area, you go, first of all, to Guernsey State Park, which is, everybody goes, shh, don't tell anybody, because it's the best kept secret. I think this is a gem right here, Hartville. I mean, I came through here, I thought the biggest thing in Hartville for, uh, first time I drove through was the big statue of the horse. Um, oh, that's ours. That, is that yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we own a little bit of that. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I was going uh, left instead of right, so I never, never even seen this before. But you guys have got a real diamond in the rough here. I mean, real gem down in here in Hartville. And um, how long do you think this is going to? How, how long of a run do you think you guys will have here? Uh, as long as we uh, can. I don't know. <laughs> So it, it'll like be. We got a few years left in us. Do you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what what are what are the future plans? Any future plans here, or is it just business as usual? I know we're we're, we're going to build a greenhouse. We're going to put in uh, maybe some TPs, do a little glamping. Um, like to put in a like to put in a, a fountain and uh, maybe a fish pond that go along with the greenhouse to do like hydroponic stuff. So are you going to raise your own? Are you going to raise your own vegetables in here too? That's the plan. We'd like to. Fresh, yeah. from 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 what they say from farm to fork. So from you guys backyard. From to fork. from backyard to fork. What a great idea! Uh, yeah. You can't get much fresher than that. It's like, honey, go out and cut me some lettuce, but make sure it's the right size. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's kind of the plan, and um, you know, just uh, try to build up our little town as much as sure. we We get a lot of people from out of state and uh, come around and they come in to eat and they want to, uh, they, they ask if there's any place to stay in town and so we're thinking, well, should we got a teepee out back, you can sleep there if you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, that's kind of our... Yeah. Do you guys ever have any, uh, let's say, live music or, or things like that in? No. No. It's, it, it rules and regulations again. Okay. Um, it costs... Just for us to play the radio, it costs us like three hundred dollars a year. Um, Licensing for, for uh, yeah, out of Nashville, the Tennessee, the, the licensing. See, I had no idea about that. Yeah, you can't just play the radio in a restaurant. 
Um, wow, because you have then if you go into live music and they play cover, uh, cover bands, or you know they play somebody else's music, uh, then they charge you more. So it's like on a sliding scale. Sure, um, sure. Uh, so you know we try to abide by the rules. And now that's even if the if, even if they come free will, uh, like a, just like an offering basis, they still going to charge you it's licensing. Like Trademark licensing for the artists. It's, wow. it's kind of like on the movies where they say, "Do not duplicate this." Yeah. Uh, uh, you know the it's federal law. Of, you're you're breaking federal law if you copy a movie. Yeah. Uh, well, they kind of do the same thing with. Uh, wow. With music, yeah. Well, which is something that I had no idea. Uh, like, I didn't either. You know, let's just play. The, you know, put some Willie Nelson on, and here we go. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, can't do it because Willie Nelson wants to get his nickel yeah. for every song that you know that they if you're playing his song. And that's a shame. And, and if it's if it's if it's private, you know, you can do it, like in your car or whatever, but if, if we're playing music for the public, then it goes into a different category where Yeah. See that's why you guys gotta get some people that. that'll write their own original music and just come in and play for you for 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 nothing. Yeah. That's 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 the answer right there, right? Yeah. No, on, when the when the restaurant has all the tables in it, though, there's really no place to do it. Sure, sure. Oh yeah, it's packed up. Yeah. And you guys, I heard that there's a waiting list. Uh, you got to have reservations. You don't pretty have much. to have reservations, but, but it really, you might not get a table. Yeah. For a while. It really helps. Yeah. And a lot of it is, he can only get so many steaks on the grill. Sure. The grills Which are going to have to start. Yeah. yeah. Well, we sure appreciate your time today, and thank you so much for joining us here on Homespun. And um, again, we are at Hartville and uh, at Miners and Stockman's uh, Steakhouse. And Spirits. And Spirits. Yeah, don't forget the Spirits. And don't forget the Spirits. And it's an old, it's the oldest, oldest Spirit House in the state of Wyoming. Well, not the, yeah, the back bar. The back bar, yeah. yeah. We have to clarify that. The building was actually built in 1905, but the back bar uh, was built in Germany in 1862. Oh, my. My. So you get, so you get a German back, German back bar then. That's great. Well, I sure appreciate you guys, and I wish you the best of luck going forward. And um, congratulations for coming out of this COVID. And uh, with your head still held high and encouraging everybody else along the way. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me, my lover stands on golden sand. She watches the ships that go sailing, they go sailing somewhere beyond that sea. She's there watching for me, and if I could fly like birds on high, then straight to her arms. Sailing, I go sailing, but it's far beyond that star, it's near beyond the moon, and I know beyond a doubt my heart will lead me there soon. Beyond 
that shore We'll kiss just as before And happy we'll be beyond the sea And never again I'll go sailing